Okay. okay, just just to make it interesting, everything that I just said uh, probably hasn't been recorded, so I, I hope you paid well attention and uh, took notes. Uh, um, yeah, good. You have the slides as backup as well, so if you have questions, just come to me and we can talk about it, yeah, in a tutorial. Um, okay, Se second part of the lecture is about uh, the promised uh, uh, front end of the project lifecycle. So today we want to do the initiation stage, uh, then the investment lifecycle. This is a cool thing. So there are consultants that even specialize on that. So if you can do that, you have already kind of uh, um, learned something that you can actually commercially offer into the project lifecycle. Yeah, and then we have uh, by the end as well, the business case development. So, and that, that is quite relevant. That is your first assignment as well. I, I think it's already made available by Omar. Omar will talk you through it in the tutorial, yeah? Okay, Let, let's make a start. Uh, um, so what will we cover? As mentioned, the initi uh, initiation, uh, um, project initiation, yeah. Yeah, initiation is good. Uh, pro with project objectives, needs and scope and drivers for decisions. And then investment life cycle, investment logic map. This this is a highlighted element. Uh, business manage, uh, benefits management plan. Yeah. So that that is as well part of what will soon be a standard called benefits realization management. That will be another very hot topic to actually implement. Yeah. But uh, benefits management in itself is already commonly applied. Actually. So then we have as well the uh, last one, the business case development. So that is kind of concepts and principles and then the business case elements. So as well, a breakdown, how they are ranking this for what project you actually need to do, what business case, yeah? Okay, so let's get started. So to just contextualize this again, we are in the front end actually. We are really here in my extended life cycle from 2011. We are in the concept and feasibility phase, yeah? So we are in the project definition and just touch now on the project delivery initiate, yeah? Okay, project initiation. So quick recap, what, what, what are we aiming for? Project success, right? So it was either project success, quality, timeliness, budget compliance, customer satisfaction, and the benefits, the outcomes that we are after, right? Or it can be project management success plus product success. Is it the same? Yes, yes, yes. Could, could be the same, it's differently measured, yeah? Um, so it's in the fine print. But um, that, that is actually why we are diving into this. Uh, here in Victoria, we have opened up the front end. So you can now go as well into projects actually with production lines or, or uh, um, for example, for infrastructure, we do that already. We do offsite manufacturing, right? Which means we, we are actually aligning other processes into the project. Um, now, why, why is this important? Um, and in particular here, the objectives. Um, I don't know if you have seen that before. This is a beautiful swing on a tree for different stakeholders and what their interest is. It's of course about perspective, right, of stakeholders. Now, uh, um, first of all, it's important to kind of identify who your stakeholders are. So, uh, but just to go with the examples here in categories. So first one, with the three tiles, uh, uh, you can see it's how the customer explained it. Yeah, so recognize not uh, all customers are very eloquent and uh, um, fully rounded in uh, um, expressing all requirements or, or uh, needs and benefits that they are after. Then uh, how the project leader understood it is the second one, right? And then you can see how the analyst designed it, and then the programmer wrote it. And uh, my favorite ones, just the most colorful one, is uh, the uh, how the business consultant described it and then how the project was documented. Yeah? So this shows you already that it's actually quite difficult to document and learn from projects. Yeah? And then what operations installed. This is actually not bad. That, that is technically a swing. Uh, um, yeah, then you, you have uh, um, the customer 
how the customer was built, yeah, this amazing entertainment park, and then how it was supported. Yeah. And then last but not least, what the customer really needed. Yeah. So the a little bit the drama and the observation that uh, projects have such challenges. So stake, stakeholders matter. Yeah. Um, how, how can we actually formulate the project objectives? Um, I don't know if you have heard that before. It's it's a SMART acronym. So it should be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. So we, we are play a little bit around in the tutorials with that. Now, uh, depending on where you have done projects, this may be different. Yeah, so in Scandinavia, uh, uh, my students would always kind of feel very strong. It's, it's not about being achievable. It's about being agreeable. You should agree as a team that this is doable. If you fail together and you have agreed on it, okay, then we know this was not possible. Yeah, but uh, this is in the nature. Yeah, so there are some controversies around this. So that sometimes changes a little bit, but it's more or less the same thing. Yeah. Uh, other versions? Any? Um, there's a version that has DR on the end. And oh, smarter. Yeah. Yes. Uh, evaluated and reviewed. Yeah, so this goes in the agreed uh, uh, direction. Yeah, 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 I like it. Yeah. So evaluate it. Uh, well, what is that? So, so you sort of over time revise your goals and you get more information. Yeah, yeah. Very good. More relevant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wait, wait a minute. Relevant, we have this way. Uh, revise, right? So uh, like with the new context, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you might need to revise mm -hmm. the goal. So it's more relevant. Or many your time bounds were unrealistic, etc. Yeah, yeah. So particular for your project team, this is probably even better than smarter. Yeah. So uh, keep in mind. So either smarter or smarter. Yeah. There's a Scandinavian version. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, it, it's the uh, uh, probably a good point to kind of keep in mind in your projects. Yeah. Um, now, uh, when we initiate a project, um, why, why do we initiate actually projects? Why do we do projects? There's what for? Need. Yeah, for, for, so what, what, what could be a need? Let's say students in the hospital, we've been involved here in front of realized. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So maybe uh, um, it's a strategic need. Yeah, so capacity. We are out of capacity. We just need more. Yeah. So that, that is a good one. Uh, um, other ones? As I often, we need a solution. Yeah. Project are good in responding to problems, right? So you you may have something emerging, yeah. So uh, and then you can make a project to actually solve it, come up with a solution, yeah, yeah. Good. Untapped. Untapped. Oh yeah, okay. So we are in this uh, strategic theory, yeah. Untapped market. We notice there's a growth opportunity or expansion uh, uh, opportunity, yeah, yeah. Very good. Other ones. Uh, paradigm shift in the world, but like. Yeah. The invention of trains or the internet. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that could be both, right? That that could be strategic, but you're, you're spot on. So we, we may have uh, environmental uh, impact. So uh, one more that we didn't yet have is uh, uh, with paradigm shift could be, for example, legislation, new laws. Yeah. We, we figure something out that we should be maybe, what is a good example? Maybe with COVID, uh, health conscious, wash our hands regularly, yeah, so we don't get it or something like that. Yeah, so then this could be a paradigm shift in how we are engaging with the public uh, space, right? But yeah, it's quite individualized my my interpretation here. But yeah, okay. So legislation or, or uh, um, change in itself can be a good initiator as well. And other ones? Sustainability. Oh, hello. Sustainability. Yeah. So kind of strategic position to to kind of. Navigate uh, for the future. Yeah, very good. Hello. So, uh, yes. Uh, um, yeah. Let, let's have a two minutes break to, to for me to figure this out. Uh, um, yeah. So the the recording is not on, and my uh, colleague normally looks uh, at it live, but it's not screen. Every week, this one. Yeah. Every Saturday. Yeah. Every every week. Uh, yeah. So last week it worked. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, well, we are doing now with Zoom, uh, just as a backup. But uh, yeah. I'll use it all yeah. the other day. Yeah. I'll see if we can. So much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>
Okay, we, we are back and you will get say not recording. <laughs> okay, we, we are we are banking here on Zoom. So uh, that this will be a different kind of recording, but uh we will have a recording. Yeah. Okay, where, where were we with this? We were why we are doing the project. So uh, it's normally about uh, simplest interpretation, current state, you need to change, yeah? Desired stage is, uh, um, could, could go already like, oh, okay, it's something we are aspiring to do or desire there. So the very positive could be as well to get out of problem, right? So that there was a notion and key, uh, key steps here is action plan, right? So that there was a link. So uh, um, common initiation uh, reasons for project, uh, um, uh, when you're starting a new business. Yeah, so actually a lot of startups um, or, inter, or or interpretation of entrepreneurship uh, um, are kind of uh, projectified or are project, um, joint ventures as well and things like that. Uh, to develop and modify product or service, uh, although this is debatable. So I, I have to admit that I'm, I'm looking a lot at the moment at innovation and product companies. So yes, they are projects, but they, they play their other games. Uh, they're kind of more market or response driven. So that is normally a very sophisticated level already of commodification and customers recognize what they expect from a product. Yeah. Um, relocating or, or uh, um, closing a facility, uh, regulatory mandate. So that was a political intent maybe or, or legal. Uh, um, to re-engineer a process or to reduce cycle time eliminate errors, reduce complaints, or for implementing a new systems or process, and uh, to introduce new equipment, tools, and techniques. Uh, yeah, is there another one? Yeah, it's, it's a good list, I, I think. Uh, um, so with this, we, we can structure it as well differently. So um, the, uh, yeah, is it initiation techniques? Uh, um, so there, there is a question, I think, uh, um, in your context. So this this came back to the complexity from last week's lecture that we just had earlier. Uh, um, so predictive, iterative, or incremental and agile flexible um, are kind of frameworks that you probably want to uh, um, evaluate once you understand how certain you are about your project context and uh, um, what's actually in it. So if, if it's uh, very uh, um, clearly defined upfront and you, you have actually already kind of um, a legal framework, like what we are working through with OPV, right? It's a framework that we kind of know we have to apply to. Then we can of course follow their process steps and assess and how applicable those are, yeah? And then you are somewhere in the predictive iterative uh, um, level, yeah? So, um, yeah, then it's as well about risk and cost and uh, um, that there's normally the expectation that we can control those. And then there's normally a dis uh, detailed business case with this. Um, although I have to admit, uh, I think this is counterintuitive. So detailed business case is normally here shorter, yeah, because you, you don't have to do the complexity assessment. Yeah, so a lot of process steps fall away because it's it's actually quite quite easy to follow or quite standardized. Uh, um, uh, iterative and incremental is more on the other side here. That is normally where you in, in uh, stages have to show the assessment of being able to control 
or at least assure that that is possible. Yeah. So um, and assure is a is an important thing because there are now insurances that have uh, focused on a lot of those uh, business parts, and uh, um, they can come in, of course, as well. So uh, in projects, insurance is like a, a um, free restart card. Yeah. So okay, you you have failed. Yeah, but it was fully insured. No problem. You start again. Yeah. Another try. I'm not sure that everybody thinks that way, but uh, at the project level, this is at least interpretation. Yeah, and then agile is really uh, um, where you try to just make sense. So you probe and test, and then uh, see what the response is. So that again, in our complexity theorem, that is really where you have to explore and see what resonates. Yeah. Oh yeah, and an uh, important point here was. So here you normally want to have uh, contracts that, that are aimed at collaboration and trust building, yeah, so that you can as well learn. Uh, so here the idea is we make mistakes and learn, not uh, um, hey, you made a mistake, you are out, yeah. So uh, oh, oh, that was your fault. This is like you you have to own this stuff. Okay. So what is project initiation in the PMI? Uh, now, this is actually uh, just a part of the framework. So if you open a PMI book up, you will see there's a whole wonderful drawing of the whole project life cycle. So in the initiation, we normally look at the uh, um, uh, needs assessment, business case, and benefits management plan. Now, PMI is delivery focused. So for them, this is actually outside of their project life cycle. So they expect it from the sponsor organization or from the client, yeah? Uh, in our Victorian framework, this is coming from you. And you have to work with the treasury to get that. But I mean, it's the same step. So it's uh, the needs assessment, business case, and benefits management plan. And uh, the important thing here to understand, uh, maybe I talk once through this uh, for, for all life cycles uh, that, that we have. So PMI is project charter, then scope management plan, and then it becomes a, a project management plan. And so they, they have kind of folded the scope management in there. Now in AI, uh, in APM and AIPM, the scope, those are all different processes, but they are, they are or, or you can see them as individual documents. But my point here is they are the same processes behind it. Yeah. So uh, this is as well about learning terminology and how they have kind of subseamed it. Yeah. But uh, um, so in the project chart, you will see we have the scope as well. Yeah. So that, that was actually my point. And in ARPM, if you're working here in an Australian company or with Atlassian, for example, have their own framework, you will see scope as a featuring element instead of the project charter. Yeah. Uh, um, Prince 2 is not project charter, project initiation document, same thing, yeah. Okay, business needs. So uh, business needs is a needs as, uh, uh, assessment. So that is understanding business goals, objectives, issues, opportunities, and recommending proposals to address them. Um, business needs is as well about generating ideas. Yeah, so you, you will see that later. So initially we are trying to identify here needs. This is normally narrowly focused around the client organization. And as you kind of recognize the stakeholders relevant and parties around it, you expand, yeah? So here, situational statement, documenting the business problem or opportunity to be addressed. And here, normally the focus is on outputs. So value to be delivered. And uh, this, this is already value delivered. Uh, so in this case, it's normally focused about what, what is a solution or, or what is what you're looking for. Is it, uh, um, yeah, so um, outputs literally means physical, right? So, um, or, or service that is kind of creating a capability. Now, uh, the, this is more in PMI and other frameworks. Uh, um, this can be as well uh, um, practices or, or behaviors you're looking for, yeah? Uh, just be aware of that. Okay, identification of key stakeholders. And here, this is normally for the strategic setting. Yeah, so, okay, for the, let, let's take the rail loop. Who are stakeholders of the rail loop? Anybody? Australian government. Yeah, Australian government Ministry is one. Transportation. Yeah. Ministry of Transportation. Yeah, Ministry of Transportation. Yeah, Department of Transport. Yeah, it's for yeah. Okay, so this is maybe government side, but uh, broader categories. Who who else are stakeholders? The community. Yeah, community public. Yeah, spot on. Yeah, 
Yeah, so actually at that point, we, we are looking at categories and representation in our projects, right, to capture that. So spot on, yeah. Okay, uh, we, we stop at that point, uh, um, but you, you get the idea. So there, there's a big, long list of stakeholders, and you're trying to capture here what their interests are and what their requirements are from that project. And then last but not least, here we identify for the first time uh, um, the identification of scope. That is normally extremely broad. Actually, you, you will see if you look in the policy documents, they say this should be one sentence. Yeah. And then they're even explicit, make it concise so people can remember. It's as well about being community capable. So there are many purposes. Yeah? It's a boundary object that we use to communicate across disciplines and so on. Uh, allow as well scope for innovation. Uh, um, so normally it's not good to uh, um, have already something in our oh, beautiful project in the UK. Uh, um, we, we researched a PFI project of a school, and then they had put in the specs the computers. And that, that was, uh, what was that? I have to lie, but it was a very old computer by the time the uh, school had been built. So that was the first thing that got kind of, I, I think they used it for a year, and then they were just buying new computers. So, so yeah, but basically the idea here is you, you want to kind of keep it open so that innovation is possible. And if you, you look here back first time for lessons learned from past project, or, or you scan the market for innovation that could be maybe relevant and, and how to do this. Yeah. Okay, context of the project. I, I like that one. I, I hadn't seen this one before. So that, that I, I think came from a uh, uh, previous team. So uh, no, normally uh, I, I separated this into organization level. And then I wrote the context like uh, environment, but I like how it's uh, gone further here. So it's in an industry, in a city, in a state, in a country, and global community. And you see in the middle, that is where you are with the project. It's amazing. I, I like it. Okay. I, I wanted to uh, um, recontextualize it as well a little bit. So, I mean, in company settings, we normally think uh, in the context about strategic alignment. So identifying ways to link strategy to change and business operations. And then, uh, um, but I mean, the, the key point is actually made here better. Yeah, you have those spheres of uh, um, probably uh, interest that goes beyond what your project is. Yeah? So your project is this targeted effort of delivering a certain benefit, right? But it happens in this context. And project management scope is as well about drawing the boundary. What is feasible to take on board? What can we not take on board? Uh, um, because it's actually on the scope of the project. Yeah. So, and, and here are typical drivers for that. So when it comes to the strategy, we had that earlier already, that was about the margin, right? So uh, project delivery is about competitive advantage. So the project business model has to normally deliver change, enable value creation for customers and, and customer, uh, customers, customer. And then this is a project value and often a design perspective. And then you have the operation uh, uh, delivery value for the customer, and then it's normally corporate business model. So you, here you have the benefits realization, operations creating value for customers of customer. Yeah. And then this is the operational uh, value. So yeah, I, I thought we really contextualize that a little bit more, but you, you see here, we have as well value to the industry. So maybe with your projects, you set new premises uh, has gone wrong. Yeah, and now everybody knows your project for, ah, project legacy. Yeah, yeah, the, the Millennium uh, 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 Dome guys wear that, yeah. It's, it's a bad memory, yeah, but uh, still, I mean, you got famous, yeah. By the way, this is where the academia, one of my favorite nature papers is somebody that got the research methodology wrong. He got cited for this 20,000 times. This is a dream for an academic, getting a paper said that 20,000 times, unfortunately for getting it wrong. This is bad, right? So, but, uh, oh my gosh. Uh, okay, but anyway, so we have as well city, state, and country, and global community. So particularly with the sustainability, that is where we are, of course, yeah. Okay, so the service of need, let's have a little bit uh, look into this with our um, innovation framework. Yeah. So um, first question we have to ask, is there a pressing need for the change in service? Um, so by the way, this is an assessment. Is it worthwhile doing the change? And this can be quite uh, particular if you're very financially driven or by a, a portfolio or shareholders, 
this can be sometimes uh, uh, heartbreaking. Yeah, so there may be changes that that are clearly objectively should be done, but maybe there isn't the internal business case yet for it. Yeah, so that that can be a killer for that. Um, is now time for a review of the service and its delivery? Um, is it in, in incremental or substantial change? So this is as well kind of checking a little bit the complexity. And this this is where it can go wrong. So when you think it's incremental, but it turns out to be actually a substantial change. And last one, if change is needed, is it likely to involve investment? So what resources do we need? Do, do we have the right teams available? Do we have the money available to do it? Um, are the right companies' resources available? So, yeah. Okay, so let's have a quick look into this. So investment lifecycle. Um, this is a wonderful case of a gold mine. Did you want, oh, okay, yeah. So uh, um, yeah, so in a nutshell, the question is, would you invest in this? So we have a wonderful opportunity. We have a, like, we have a field, a beautiful mining opportunity and it uh, can be your gold mine. Would you invest? That's a question. Just to give you a little bit of context about this one. So let's imagine that now you are the ones who have all the money. So you are the investors. And here you are going to, or you are interested in investing in a gold uh, mine company. You know that the cost of getting a kilogram of gold, including treatment, freight, and refining and royalties, so pretty much everything, is like around $5,000 per kilogram. You, if you have a look at the graphs in the stock market, how much is the kilogram of gold? Uh, you can see that it's like around, well, this one is a little bit old, but like this last year, but this one is like around 60, uh, uh, yeah, 60,000. Yeah, 60,000 dollars per kilogram. So you have the cost, five, 5,000. The price, 60,000 dollars per kilogram you know that the production is going to be like around three metric tons per year, and you are going to have production for five years. You have a 15 month startup period, but after that you're going to have production for five years. Would you invest in this mining company? So that is the question. And um, you'll go there and say yes or no. This is in preparation for our crowdsourcing of future infrastructure to, to evaluate as well. If, if people... What do I don't know. It's too okay. good to be true, yeah? Yeah, good. So I guess that's like around 80% of, of you would invest in this gold mine. So let me just go back. Yes. So it's around 80. And we don't need a response. Don't, uh, don't respond anymore. We're just going to clear this. And now let's go back to the same part there. So these are the... This is the information that you have available at the moment, right? So for these mining companies. Now, what if I tell you that uh, this mining company, well, the site is in an Aboriginal place. The Aboriginal community is against the mining in general. There are new regulations in the government uh, well, coming from the government, that you cannot use specific materials for 
uh, mining, and it's exactly what you were using in previous projects. And if you want to go for this project, you need to convince all the Aboriginal community and you need to uh, take them on board. And uh, they, the government also implemented a few regulations in which you need to apply for a permit. So I'm going to take probably a few years time. Would you invest or not? No. <laughs> so go again and vote for that. Okay, good. So I think it's completely the opposite. Like around more than 80% wouldn't invest in this project. And I guess that there the point is that you have to be you have to consider all the different factors, not just the cost and the price. So you need to consider a lot of different things that are involved in the development of the project. Yeah, very good point, uh, um, I, I was just thinking, so I mean, pro project uh, uh, um, management kind of uh, has, of course, a currency of stakeholder management and environmental assessment is certainly part of it, but uh, um, you have, of course, a high risk. So normally uh, uh, what you want to do is uh, really figure out what the community or indigenous uh, um, uh, community thinks about this and consult with them thoroughly before making an investment, right? So maybe they're in on it, yeah, and they are like, yeah, this is the best plan ever. Uh, let's let's do it together, uh, and then then it can be a successful project. Well, yes. Okay, let let's come a little bit to a definition. What what is the investment? Uh, the commitment. Oh, I should have a general question here first. I, I like this. This is already very framed. What well, what is the investment for you? What would you call an investment? Oh, but what's the difference? Uh, is is my is my apple that I ate earlier an investment? Certain return of data and more the amount that we invest in. It depends on back the amount that we have more than the amount that we invest. In. Yeah, I like that. So you, you're thinking already like a financial external investor, right? So this is normally yeah. like a creditor. Yeah. Then, yeah. then we are normally after more than what we want back. Yeah. In companies, we invest as well just yeah, because this is kind of our plan. We hope for more capability and happy teams and so on. Yeah, but uh, there may not be direct returns and unless you do something. Yeah. Other definitions? Yeah. A certain return of benefit. Yeah. Yeah, return of a benefit. Yeah. I think anything that would result in a greater output. Uh, yeah. That is, so, for, first of all, it's only uh, something in the future. So, investment is future oriented and it's normally to improve your state, right? That, that is probably the most basic one. Uh, um, yeah, very, very good. I'm, I'm happy with this. Now, here we, we are uh, already a little bit in the policy framework. So, it's a commitment of the resources of an organization with the expectation of receiving a benefit, yeah? So th this is already slightly different from financial investor. There you're normally looking at uh, return on investment, right? Or, or I mentioned the internal rate of return as well, and companies, this is normally what you're looking for. But this is a little bit more targeted. So this could be as well um, to maybe compliance, right? That you are certified to operate in a certain environment or, or other things like that. Okay. Investment decisions, uh, um, kind of uh, um, uh, making functions, uh, shape new investment, right? Uh, prioritized investment proposals, develop new policy and monitoring and measuring the delivery of benefits and evaluating a program of investment, refocusing on an organization to improve its effectiveness and monitoring an organization's outcomes. So um, that, that is kind of 
the, the uh, um, uh, function of the overall investment framework here. Um, so what are we looking uh, for in this? So um, the standard that we are using here is the investment uh, uh, management standard. So this is again uh, um, from the treasury. So this is a new framework. So you kind of mapping out here, what is the problem? What are the be benefits that need to be delivered? What is the preferred response? So this kind of hints towards uh, um, uh, KPIs as well or aligning drivers and what's the recommended solution. Yeah. So back to what we had earlier. So this is again uh, um, where we are upfront here in the business case and uh, procurement is basically where you compare the different solutions offered uh, um, against what you are after. And then the delivery is where you kind of check how it's done, right? Okay. Now that oh, to compare investment lifecycle, project lifecycle. So here we, we have expanded into planning, execution, monitoring, and control and completion. So that, that is actually the bread and butter, right? Where we pick basically the investment lifecycle up as response. Now, um, when we look at the uh, um, Victorian, so that is a Victorian digital asset strategy. They're kind of the framework for us here in the uh, um, Department of Treasury uh, uh, Investment Lifecycle. So um, you have on top of the, the business case, so the uh, um, highlight the life cycle, and then below you have the uh, more typical leaders project life cycle. So there you start with the brief, then you have the concept. So brief is kind of pre-project, yeah, what we just looked at. Uh, concept is kind of the concept design, then the definition is really the requirements and details you need for, for feasibility, and then it's design build and commission and hand over and close out. And then you have operations and uh, maintenance. And here in the bottom bracket, you have the asset life cycle, right? So that even extends to the uh, product construction in use and of uh, um, life. And then ideally circular economy. So for you, hopefully this will be bread and butter. So that is where we think how we can reuse, repurpose and, and uh, recycle. And if if not, get rid of it in a in a, a healthy and sustainable way, right? And then start the life cycle again. Ideally, from cradle to cradle. Yeah? So you you had one use and then you had two another use. Uh, now, um, what are the roles? Um, so I mean, I picked this here from from one of my uh, um, uh, previous book chapters. So um, the, we we kind of conceptualize this as different roles. So. The investor has the role of the strategic, or tries to get uh, um, strategic advantage out. So um, uh, um, if you look put up, um, he, he is after, or he or she is after the return. And here the role is normally portfolio. So they see that strategic, how this uh, um, project generates and this for them. Then the control is here normally focused on the vision so that you actually achieve the benefit. And uh, they are often after exporting the service. Then uh, the business is often after enhanced capabilities, uh, is the one that delivers the benefit, uh, program management, and that is often they have the mandate, right? So that is transition to building as usual. And then uh, um, supplier or, or the delivery uh, element is the project management level, right? And then you, you have as well the implementer, which is a specific task and the technical development. Yeah, but I, I just wanted to show you once how the roles actually interrelate. Yeah. Now, uh, in investment and project management, we, we have kind of different questions to ask. So particularly when it comes to the uh, um, planning, we, we try to answer in investment management, the logic for planned investment. Uh, um, is it clear? Uh, um, is there a sound case to invest? Have we defined the best solutions? If we consider how to respond to uncertainty and uh, in delivery, this kind of follows on. Uh, and the evaluation is quite interesting. Where the intended benefits delivered? So, did we get the right stuff there? Uh, uh, in the project management question, it's more do we have the resources to deliver the solution? Do we understand the risk of the project delivery? Uh, so, that comes again back to the uncertainty. Do we understand the context enough? Or is there something that we and where, uh, uh, good delivery is kind of the game, but then when it comes to the evalu evaluation, you can see where the expected products or services delivered. So in other words, the, the relationship 
did we project management deliver what investment management actually expected for, to get out of it, right? So, um, yeah. So th this is kind of for the relationship. Then we have the uh, business case analysis. So this is a five case model that, that is actually favored. So this is a, a, a from the treasury in New South Wales. So they kind of um, divided into the case for change. Is there the value for money? Yeah, and uh, then you can see what they actually expect in terms of questions and processes to be addressed. And then financial analysis, and then you have the commercial analysis and management analysis. Don't worry, don't go too deep here. The, the idea here is to show you that that actually uh, um, links to our investment logic map. So, um, so investment logic map is a tool. Uh, actually, we have done that for a while. So before there was as well benefits map. Yeah, the investment logic map is actually the internal project focus for that. So um, it's really to understand the narrative of the investment. Uh, um, so it's it's supposed to clarify the narrative uh, narrative behind the proposal, defines a problem and uh, or opportunity, and logically maps the responses to the benefits of the proposal. So how does it look? It's supposed to be a one pager looking something like that. Now. Uh, as an academic, I just have to say with cause effect here, this, I'm not happy with this. this, could have been phrased differently. But okay, anyway, so that, that is more or less what you expected to do. So there, there is uh, the problem and it goes first around on the top. So you have a problem, the cause, you have a response. You, you try to develop here the uh, interventions, multiple options that you're evaluating. Then you come to the changes, yeah, that there's maybe business changes. And that translates into the solution for the asset, yeah? so physical asset if required. And then this should deliver. So the solution should deliver the KPIs. That is the benefit. So how, how the solution delivers that. Yeah? And then ideally, the benefit talks to the effect if it's gone right. Yeah. OK, so here is a, a typical uh, um, logical map abstract. And I think you guys will do this today, right? So do you start this? Oh, next week, okay. So uh, um, yeah, but uh, um, so this is a very powerful tool. So if you are a project manager on the front end, design or concept phase, this is where a lot of uh, hard blood goes into, yeah, all I'm saying. But yeah, so basically this is a logic. So you start with a problem and then the, the logic is very simple. We haven't written this down here, but uh, if, if you think about it, how is going this way, and then what you're doing is doing that way. So you have the problem on one side, then the uh, um, ben benefit, yeah? So what are you proposing? And then you have the response, and then you have the solution, right? With changes in assets. Now, I, I've, I've shown you this as well in context. So uh, in benefits management, so if you're a large company, then you offer a few strategic objectives that drive them, and then you have the objectives, yeah? And then uh, we do actually both. We do benefits and disbenefits. So, for example, uh, here it was improve the quality uh, of life for the users uh, that use the service. Yeah, and then uh, to improve service offering is very high level. But then uh, it was the service was quite cruel, cut uh, in or out. Yeah, so that was reducing staff morale. So the opportunity was here uh, um, uh, to to actually improve this. So they did that by increase staff skill level, but as well pass the customer service so that that doesn't happen anymore. And then you can see business change where kind of embedded roles and policies and procedures were adjusted. And that then led to uh, um, output. So you had no organizational structure that could actually cope with the emerging changes. Yeah. Okay, that was very high level and very quick. Um, this can be kind of uh, moderated by KPIs but I, I have a feeling I had one more slide and then, yeah. Let, let's do the benefits uh, uh, management um, next week because we, we have said as well the, the session to this. So next week we have from the audit office, uh, um, uh, one of the audit officers coming and then talking about portfolio assessment. So he will be a good person to actually contextualize that for you. So for now, we, we will stop here uh, with a with, uh, benefits map yeah, and investment logic. And uh, um, very importantly, um, before I forget it, so we will launch as well uh, a small, uh, um, did you have the, yeah. So we, we have a survey for you. So if you are going to the web page, you can give us at the end of each session feedback. So we, we saw 
uh, three uh, students already found this, I think, last week, but we wanted to advertise it a little bit more. So if you have topics that you're missing or, or where you want more case studies, so as you noticed, today was just me. Next week, we have the first guest lecturer. Then we have every week and then one week, two guest lectures. Um, then let me know. Yeah. So post this there. But as well, general question, if something wasn't clear, flag it up. Yeah. Okay. That's it from me for today. Have a wonderful rest week. And we see you in the tutorial. Yeah. Just quick for you to know where to find these surveys. If you go to the quizzes, you got the left hand side. And if you go at the bottom, you are going to find surveys. So they are going to be active for the week, now until the end of the week. So you can give feedback here. If you didn't understand something or specific questions, you can put them here. Thank you. Thank you.